Hiya! So, I'm just going to do a uh, quick update. I haven't played in a while. There'll be no gameplay um, in this video. And, um, as you can see, I've already gotten a lot of stuff done. Now, I didn't... I, I originally tried to record uh, setting this up, but I went through, like, five or six iterations, so... Um, it was it was pretty difficult. Let's get up to the first part of the spaceship over here. That's the bottom of the spaceship. And we're not going to do any tricks to get up. We're just going to jump on one of the um, conveyors and we're just going to run to the top here. And as you can see um, how some things are built already. Okay, here we are on the spaceship. The bottom of the spaceship. The sides haven't been built. Nothing is really going on. Uh, but I have moved the space elevator um, here. Actually, I don't know if I built the space elevator in the last uh, video, but I moved the space elevator a bunch of times, too, just to get it positioned just the way I wanted it. And here are the first 10 conveyor ports to get uh, stuff into the spaceship. Now, this bottom level is probably just going to be, like, for piping and wiring and stuff to bring um, garbage to different locations. So what I did is I built this uh, pad, this platform, and then I lowered this square down. Whoops. Um, well, I lowered that square down, but basically it's the same thing. So that square I lowered down just like this, and I did that normally just by putting stacking um, uh, foundations underneath one another. And then I went to Satisfactory Maps, and I uh, edited the absolute value for that square, and put it on a 45 degree angle. Actually, it might have been this square. I'm not sure which square it was, but I did it at a 40 degree angle, and I had to reload once or twice because when I set it at a 43, 45 degree angle, it might have been pointing that way, or it might have been pointing that way. And then I just had to um, change the um, the absolute value so that it would be pointing down this way. And, I, and it is a 45 degree angle, isn't it? Yes, it is. Then once I had the, the um, foundation at a 45 degree angle, I tried different things like walls and conveyor poles and things like that. Now, once you have uh, things at and once you have your your objects at a at the appropriate angle, actually, that's not 45 degrees, is it? Yes, it is. Maybe not. Whatever. Uh, once you have things at the angle that you want to put on, they will attach at that angle. So if I come over here and I grab a wall and I put down the wall, and then I try to like say attach a um, logistics wall pole on there. I can't actually um, attach it at an angle. Now you can attach, uh, I don't have it, but you can attach liquid pipe at different angles. I wish they would let you attach conveyors at a different angle. And the reason that I spent so much time working on getting this like angled the proper way is because as you can see between each one of the supports um, you get a very nice and um, smooth transition between them. There's no waviness. So, as you can see, that goes straight down. There's a little tiny bit of waviness. If you get really, really close to it, you can see it. Well, you can't really see it from this angle. There you go. You can see it from this angle. There's a tiny bit of waviness. That still bugs me. But um, with these at an angle, it's, it's perfect all the way down. And anything you attach to these walls will be at a 90 degree angle in accordance to the walls. Now, you can still use this as a, as a reference. So if I want to put a, uh, a, uh, a thing here, there we go. I can still put stuff down at this angle here. Now, these walls will be removed at some point. This is just for guidance. And what I will be putting in here will be uh, beams, and then the beams will go down to the ground. Now, I did use Micromanager a little bit to uh, position everything kind of perfectly. 
so to move in the uh, the four cardinal directions and get it set up so it was going uh, into the proper um, uh, into the uh, up in here to the proper place and then I can attach to these um, uh, to these con to the conveyor lifts now right now they're just stacked like too high I think it's too high yeah it's too high and then there's four on one and four on the other and then two on the top here uh, but that will expand out as more resources come up and I may put other access points in different places so that more material can be lifted up into the ship. The ship is going to be the the primary manufacturing point. Everything's going to be here. Uh, and that that point was just there so that I could um, I could decide where this um, this branch was going to go. That doesn't matter. That's just on that thing right there. Back on the top, this will be design more like a standard um, factory that that everybody has done once we're up here and then I'm I'll shape the outsides to look like a ship but it is it is coming along oh and then we have um, one this is where the power comes up so if I remove that the power comes up here that was not easy to put in I actually had to put a wall in um, attach it and then remove the wall and then blah 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 uh, these angles are actually easier than um, you think. So basically, I just put, um, I connected the conveyor into the lift, and then um, even though this lift is at a 90 degree angle to the horizon, these will still attach at a 90 degree angle to the wall, and will uh, it'll give you a little hump here at first, um, but then you attach uh, this straight and then you go you delete first you delete the one that you lay down you attach this straight and then you go from here to here and then they will have this sharper lip which I prefer over the big hump the big hump is annoying and let's move this and yes of course of course this is all to satisfy my OCD nature so that everything comes up in a way that I am not satisfied with but I will be able to handle without my brain melting. Oh, and down here it's kind of it's crisscross too. So um, these two conveyors are supported uh, by the center wall here, and then these conveyors here are supported by this outer wall. And it's just to make everything a little more staggered, so that I can make a Christmas tree in the center here, sort of like uh, high tension wires. Now how this will integrate into these uh, branches here, this branch is not at uh, a 90 degree angle. It's, it's a little bit off because um, I needed to get this path right here. I wanted to come by these machines, come up here, and then be able to go off into the distance over here from this branch. And how they will get into the um, into the main line here, into the bus line. I can just use simple mergers, like uh, like these blocks here. Oh, I also uh, installed vertical merger, but I probably won't use these. Um, and then you can just like stick them in here and then be able to merge in the other lines. Now, I have another mod installed that's basically a expandable um, balancer and you can put them side by side. I forget what the name of the mod is, but it's like, I think it's balancer or something like that. And you can put as many inputs as you want and as many outputs as you want. So uh, this way I'll be able to temporarily hook this into te whatever's coming through here, temporarily hook it into the main bus line and put the, put the, uh, 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 the conveyor on it and then have a balancer and then spit out uh, whatever I need um, onto the bus. Um, it'll just be cleaner, it'll be nicer, and I may even have a platform for where that occurs, uh, but that doesn't unlock until like um, tier six or something like that. And the 
these things I just wanted to look at. They're sort of nice and sort of not nice. It's I'm I'm kind of I kind of have mixed feelings about this. It, it serves uh, it serves a niche, basically allowing um, uh, vertical integration, like literal vertical integration. Um, I don't know. If if uh, if coffee stain were to add them in, I would say that it was a, a welcome addition. But if they don't add them in, I would say there's there's no um, harm lost because I don't know. Now I'm kind of torn into adding onto the bus line just or or adding onto the bus line finished ingots. Um, I'm I'm leaning towards more or because I would really like the ship to do everything and not touch nature as much as possible, but that's still open to, uh, to, to change. Uranium down there will absolutely be processed uh, to some extent. I think uranium pellets uh, are less radioactive than the other forms of uranium, like raw uranium or uranium control rod, which is not realistic because you can handle uranium uh, fuel rods, fuel bundles, with just cotton gloves. And the only reason that you need to use cotton gloves is because you don't want to put your oil on the, it's either nickel or zinc, I can't remember, on the outer cladding, and because that will affect the, uh, the chemistry of the cladding, your, the oil on your hands. Um, but it is not radioactive. Well, it is slightly radioactive, but most of the radiation is contained inside the, the, the fuel bundle, like the, the alpha particles. I'm not gonna get into the science of that because I'm going to quote it wrong, but because of the way the, the uh, because the uranium has not yet been irradiated itself, it has a very mild radioactive uh, level to it and, it, and it won't hurt you. Just raw or even slightly processed and even enriched uranium that has not been in a reactor or in a nuclear explosion um, is very minimally harmful to you. It's not completely safe, it's not completely safe, but it's minimally harmful to you. So once I get this uh, main bus line all sorted out, um, all of this manufacturing is going to be moved up here, and I'm going to start on getting these those smart plates uh, f uh, worked out, and we'll have a few more layers. It still won't look like a ship yet. Um, it probably won't look like a ship until, you know, like closer to tier four or five or something like that. And it may not look exactly the way I want it until I am almost completely done um, building it. Once that's built, we're probably not going to be pulling in resources from all over the planet. So once we're done building this, I might build another one somewhere else on the world uh, to do the same thing. I won't show the whole building process, but um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking about that. And then the uh, the tether is just going to be used like as as a space anchor because uh, the tether doesn't exactly need to be attached to the to the ground to um, to work. So um, the way the way that a that a space elevator or a space tether works is that there is a weight in geostationary orbit, and then the tether dangles down. Because the weight is in ge geostationary orbit, its physical position on the planet never moves. And it's not really dangling uh, per se, because part of the uh, tether is pulled down by gravity and held into place, and then part of the weight is um, trying to be flung out into space along with the weight, except it's being kept in position around the planet. So you have the centrifugal or centrifugal force, I forget which one is which, that, you know, keeps it out there. You could stand underneath one of the tethers and you could put your hand up against it and, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't risk crushing yourself unless, you know, the, 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 the weight, the orbit moved slightly, which is possible, to bring the tether down and crush you. But if it was perfectly aligned, completely perfectly aligned, and there was no tidal forces acting on anything, it would stay in perfect lock sync. 
of course, because of tidal forces and, and other things, you'll have some drifting. I'm trying to explain this way too much. Nobody cares. Seriously, nobody cares. Conveyors are just going to come off of here, and um, whenever the space elevator needs uh, resources, we'll just kick them as needs be. Forward of the uh, station, I'm going to make a nice little pretend bridge, one that'll be able to look down and up and everything, so this is going to be the absolute front of the uh, of the spacecraft that might change and we might move forward a bit depending on what kind of uh, resources I'm processing on at the moment and we'll have some sort of control room probably one level up or something being able to look down at the tether um, and that will include the um, uh, the hub down there and probably the awesome uh, or at least one awesome sink behind it I'm not exactly sure. I may not. I may have uh, set a separate, separate awesome sinks in, in different locations. But the um, the the control room will just be the rest of the uh, the base items that uh, you have to have with the game. Now for power, right now I'm just powering everything down here for temporary purposes. But that's going to be a nuclear power plant somewhere in here. And I think I worked it out to I need six plants or four and a half plants I can't remember how many it is uh, nuclear plants uh, that will ingest as as much uh, uranium as they need and then we will convert the waste into plutonium and then we'll sink the rest of the plutonium um, just to keep things balanced out and that's going to be um, aft of the uh, uh, of the whole thing at the bottom of the of the processor barge water i don't think i explained how water is going to get in here so um up in the balloon gas tree valley up there i'm going to put um uh, as many uh, water harvesting resources as i can as much pumps as i can now if you don't know how head pressure works or how um, water flows even within a pipe um, i'll explain it a little bit I'm not going to go overboard, I promise. So if I were to build an aqueduct, just a just a, a straight trough from here, from this point here, to that mountain, and then you were to fill that aqueduct with water, it will self-level to the center of gravity. And it doesn't matter how deep that aqueduct is, it doesn't matter if there are holes in the aqueduct, so say it's it's flat for, let's say, 12 squares, and then drops, and then straight for 12 squares, and then drops. Uh, as long as it's sealed, the water level will always rise to the point where it can flow. Now imagine you take that aqueduct and you put a cover on it, okay? The water is still going to rise to whatever level, to the maximum of the cover. Then once you get above the cover, anything above the aqueduct's cover just adds pressure inside the aqueduct. Now say you go straight, then you go down, then you go straight, and then you go up, and then you go down. This would be, let's say that this way in my little drawing is um, the bottom is the planet, the bottom of the aqueduct, and this is the sky up here. So sky here, water comes in this way, it would pour down this way, fill up the aqueduct here, and then it would start filling this side to the same level as it is over here and then spill over even if it wasn't closed that that's what that's what that was occur would occur because the weight of the water on this side and inside the channel down here will push it up 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 until it's the same level on this side water always wants to remain level to the center of gravity so why is that important? Well, if we attach a tube up there and we run a tube full of liquid all the way up here, as long as the air pressure here and over there are even, the water will settle at the same level on both sides. You can use this phenomenon to build liquid levels. So you can have a, um, um, a hose with colored water in it, 
and then you can you can put the hose up to a point that you want to measure then bring the other side everywhere you want along um, a distance and find out where it's um, exactly where level is now when I was an apprentice plumber we used to do this all the time to hanging uh, recirculation lines but that's how that works water will always want to remain level now this deck here is actually slightly below that that uh, um, that mountainous region there. So I'm I can't remember exactly how many how many meters of head uh, lift that we have over here, but getting that water from there to here, uh, even even dumping it down into the um, the bus means that it'll come up here very easily. We don't have to do we don't have to make any kind of effort whatsoever to get it up here and then that'll supply the um, machines and it'll supply the, uh, the the reactors the only thing I don't know is how much water I can get out of there there isn't very much deep water up there there's some but not a lot I can add some in from down below I'm interrupting myself to try to be a little more clear to what I'm trying to say if you have a water source that fills a pipe and goes down then up the outward side of the pipe will fill to be level to the fill line of your water source and the water source doesn't need to be pumped that just happens naturally it'll fall down the pipe and then fill the other side up as I explained before but if you enter in a new water source at the bottom of your you bend there the water will try to accumulate at the lowest point meaning if the lowest water source has a lower pressure than the head pressure the flow will overwhelm that source and push all the water into it so if you have a, a pump down there it would have to be rated to supply as much pressure as the entire um, head pressure it would be like poking a hole in the pipe it just you wouldn't get any head pressure at all the question i have is how well the game models this so will the game average out what the head pressure is if i put if i put a, a pump on the water at sea level and a pump just above the waterfalls will it calculate an average head pressure between the two water sources or will it just default to the highest pressure or will it do something strange like give you a head lift for the number of liters a full head lift for the number of liters that you're putting in from the high source and a head lift equivalent to the low source I'm not sure how that how the game is modeling that I can still separate the the pipes out so that um, the the primary feed will feed the reactors and then we won't have to worry about that we'll have a nice buffer zone and then we'll put pumps on this one and that's it. That's as far as I've gotten so far. Um, we'll expand a, a little bit more in the future. I'm going to try to tap as, as many of the uh, nodes around here as possible. I don't really care what the, uh, the purity of the nodes are because we're just onboarding as much as we can uh, onto these buses as possible. These buses will expand and this, bu this bundle will just keep, keep getting bigger until um, we have like a lot of shit on it and uh we can we can have this this nice beautiful um resource scout spaceship that affects the planet as little as possible just pulling up resources which you know affects the planet but whatever i remember in futurama they, they were mining uh dark matter which was like nibbler's poo off of a off of a planet but they they kept the landscape they they didn't uh, mess with the landscape but they were still pulling, they were still hauling out, hollowing out the planet until the planet collapsed. That was kind of funny. And kind of like, you know, even if you make it look like on the surface you're not uh, um, destroying the environment, deep down, you still are. Yay for being preachy!